Okay, as we go along, we're getting a little bit more complex through our plant evolution, and we're at the point of seedless vascular plants. You may be familiar with the most common example here are ferns fall into the category of seedless vascular plants. When I use the term vascular, though, you might be wondering, well, what, is, uh, what does this refer to? Well, vascular tissues are specialized cylindrical or elongated cells that form a network throughout the plant. Think of them as like the vessels going through the plant. And there's two types of this vascular tissue. The first type is called xylem, and this conducts water and minerals from the roots upward to the rest of the plant. Xylem works mainly in one direction, starting at the roots, going up to what we call the shoots, and then ultimately the leaves. Water will then exit out the leaves um, through the stomata. The other vascular tissue is called phloem. And this conducts carbohydrates throughout the plant. Now, phloem can work both going from roots to shoots, but it can also go from shoots down to roots. Phloem has the ability to move up and down the plant. The reason why that's important is carbohydrates need to be moved throughout the entire plant. If you're growing a potato below ground, that storage organ, the carbohydrates made in the leaves need to be moved down to the potato. Here we have an actively growing apical meristem, the growing tip. We need to move carbohydrates from this leaf up the plant to here. So phloem has the ability to go up and down, and is transporting mainly sugars such as carbohydrates. Xylem is conducting water in some minerals, and is mainly working from the roots upward in one direction to the top of the plant. Now, our believed to be the oldest remaining group of the vascular plants is estimated to have been around 400 million years. Uh, these, if you've ever been walking in the woods, you see these examples of a ground pine, which are a kind of a subset of club mosses, and you think they're going to get any taller. Well, they're, they're not. This is their typical um, fully grown size. Here's some other types of club mosses. You can see they look very different. And we're progressing along our cladogram here. We're working our way getting to gymnosperms and angiosperms, but we see we've progressed from our mosses, our hornworts, and our liverworts, and this are all originated from our common ancestor of green algae. Now, these seedless vascular plants, ferns, as I said, is the most common one you're probably familiar with. The sporophyte generation is much larger and more complex than the gametophyte. Remember, gametophyte is going to produce gametes, sporophyte is going to produce the spores. Leaves on a sporophyte are called fronds. So this gets into just a little terminology here. And we're looking at seedless vascular plants, in particular ferns. This entire, this isn't called a leaf, this is called a frond. This phylum also includes whisk ferns and horsetails, also fall into this category. The blade is the area here, as we see. We have uh, the frond being the entire portion, and the blade being where we would typically say where the leaves are. But each one of these are little leaflets. So this is kind of all one continuous unit here. And that is referred to again as the frond for ferns. Now the alternation of generations, as I mentioned a little bit before, as I said, you're most familiar with the large sporophyte. This is what it looks like. The haploid generation that's producing the gametes here. The gametophyte looks very different. Um, and those spores are coming together as sori on the underside of the lead, of the fronds here that are falling to the ground and are producing the gametophytes that will produce both male and female gametophytes which will fertilize to develop the um, diploid organism here that will then produce the sporophyte. Lastly, of uh, the fern life cycle, there's a rhizome which is a modified underground stem. The source, as I mentioned here, is a collection of spore-producing sporangia and they're the little dots on the underside of the leaf. If you've ever looked at a frond of a fern leaf, you may see some little dots under it. That's the sporangium, and that's going to produce the spores that ultimately will produce the gametophytes that produce the next generation. In New England, early in the springtime, you may see something called fiddleheads. These are young curled fronds, and some are edible. Uh, they don't last for very long. Um, early in the spring, typically months of April and May, you may see these kind of curled up things starting to grow. Those are um, small little curled up fronds of a fern. And some people really like them and there's certain varieties that are edible. Um, and you may see them as listed as restaurants as fresh um, plants that you can eat.